Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. As promised, I am going to show you how to make this modular origami ball. I think, and I'm hoping I'm pronounced it properly, it's called a kasutama. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do this today. This particular piece is 64 different, excuse me, 64 sheets of paper, um, half in one color and half in the other. Now you do not have to make it, you do not have to do all the two colors if you would like you don't want to but um, I think it looks prettier that way and I actually have never made it without the two colors so again you can do this in one sheet of one color which would be 32 sheets of paper or you can do them both in 64 I'm going to do this one like I normally do in with two colors of paper so in this video I will definitely put a link in the description below of this type of paper this is regular paper it's pretty thin um, nothing special to it it's double-sided and so it doesn't really matter which side you start with because um, it's double-sided so anyways um, I'm going to show you how to fold this sheet into this flower and I'll do it again and I'll try to do it as slow as I possibly can and kind of show you at different angles of what it looks like that you're going to do it and then I'll speed up the process and get all 64 sheets of paper folded up and then once that is done I will put uh, I'll put everything together for you and show you how to do it which is pretty simple you just stack it and use some glue and then it's pretty much done so um, all right so let's go ahead and do that for to start this you're going to do um, a square base and if you haven't seen how I did my square bases it's in the first origami video for the origami crane that I did right here but I'll show you again right now it's super simple open it up squash down one of the sides now again like this like I said this paper is pretty thin so it likes to move and do other things other than what you want it to do so uh, just kind of don't don't push it down like right away because then you'll probably it'll probably be off the um, crease and then it'll just mess you up so just be careful with it and like I said it's very thin okay so once you got your base right here now you're at the point where you can actually make an origami crane if you wanted to but we are not going to do that we are making this ball and I know I'm probably kind of contradict myself and I said always remember um, the open part facing you in this case we're not doing that the open part needs to face away from you because you're gonna work with the folded ends <clears throat> so that's step one step two would be to fold the outer edge to the middle your crease is pretty prominent because you'll see why <laughs> you'll see why at the end of this video or at this end of this um, folding session okay so once you get to this st stage I call this the kite stage I'm gonna go ahead and reverse reverse it um, reverse folds so I'm not sure if that's exactly how you call what you call it but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of the flaps we are going to open it up and push that flap in and squash it down okay so we're gonna do that again take one of the flaps open it up squash it and then close it in on itself okay and then just work all the way around till all of your flaps have been pushed in okay so now you're at stage three uh, if you look at it you're piece is pretty much opened and everything is closed in on itself okay from here make sure okay make sure you're not 
make sure your piece doesn't look like that. Make sure your piece looks like this. This is very important. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to take this edge of this one piece and put it to the and line it up with the middle. So you see, it should look like that. Now you can work on this side. So again, outer edge lined up to the middle. Of your points. Okay. All right, and then fold that down. So now you're ready to create the flower. Now, all that folding that you just did, make sure everything pushed down, make sure the creases are, are pretty prominent. Okay. Now, what you're going to do with this is you're going to unfold it. Yes, all that work you just did, you are unfolding. And then just do it carefully. Okay, and then you're gonna open it, oops, sorry. You are gonna open it completely and then boop invert it all right so now now you're going to put together the flower in order to do that so you see how you see your lines you are going to take you're working with this we're with these little diamonds right here so you're going to kind of fold this back fold that in and then tuck that little piece in then you're going to work on the other side. So fold, and then tuck it in. Okay, I'm going to show you that. Again, you're going to fold the back piece, fold the back piece. Now it's going to get a little tight, and you're going to like, oh my gosh, I'm going to rip it. You're not going to rip it. And then you just push in all of those creases that you made you're just pushing them in so you're folding pretty much folding in reverse so this part go right there this part goes right there open it up a little bit so you can tuck in these pieces you have made a flower. I'm not going to tell you this is simple. <laughs> this took me a couple years to figure out how to do. Um, and I actually had to repractice this video, this 
making this flower for this video because it's been a very long time. It's been about two years since I made this ball. Um, so yeah, so that's how you make a flower. All right, we're gonna do it again. But this time I'm gonna start with, I've already, like I said, if you're gonna take, or, I, ha I have a pro tip on this video. I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna put it. I'm probably gonna put it right after this, but I pre-made my pieces. I pre-made some of my pieces. So, um, and I have them in stages. So this is stage one. Then you have stage two, stage three, and you have stage four, but I think I just, I already folded it. So stage four, you'll see in my pro tip, which I'm actually gonna put right after this section. And, um, I'll, and I'll explain to you why I'm doing this. So anyway, hey everybody, pro tip time. So if you are going to tackle a modular origami piece like this Kasutama, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Uh, I do recommend doing it in stages unless you're gonna spend an entire day to make this because this particular piece is 64 sheets of paper. It is 32 in each color and it is time consuming and it's a lot of folds. So I highly recommend doing this in stages. That way you can kind of stop, put it aside and come back to it at a later date if you'd like. So this is what I mean about doing in stages. So here's four stages, two of them you can actually combine into one if you'd like, and I'll show you that in a second. But your first stage is um, taking your flat sheet of paper and turning it into a box space. And then you can put that aside, come back to it, and then do your second set of folds, which will make it look like a kite. You can put that aside, and then when you come back to it, you'll have your third piece, your third, your third sets of folds, which I recommend doing the third and fourth all together. The reason being is once you're at this stage, your piece is open. And if you're just tossing it in a box, it can actually unravel a little bit. And so I recommend either once you get to this stage, go ahead and do the final folds before you get to your final step. And that way it'll hold it more securely than just having it wide open. It'll be a little bit more compact. So once you get to the third stage, you can go ahead and do the final and fourth stage, which is assembling the, fl the flower. So yeah, that's a little pro tip helps you out so you're not sitting there constantly just folding 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 because this does get time consuming and um, if your fingers are a little sore it's nice to step back and take a break and have stages that you can do this in so again if you are going to tackle on a elaborate origami piece like this uh, kasutama flower round flower i recommend doing it in stages one two three and final if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks. So let's go ahead and make another one. This is stage one. So I made my basic box base and I'm working with the folded side. So to keep track, the opening needs to be away from you. So from here, again, this edge needs to go to the and invert them. So I open it up. Sorry, I'm trying to keep this focused. Um, open it up and then just push, push it in and then squeeze it on the lines. Okay, same thing with this side. Just take a flap, open it up, push it down and then squeeze it shut. 
Okay. I'm going to do this for all four sides, or for all four flaps, I should say. And this is why it's important to make sure your creases are, are pretty, are good, because this paper will like, will try to um, go in a different direction. Okay. So now you're at this stage. Now, I know in my earlier video, I said, make your lines as perfect and you don't want anything messed up. Um, you want everything to be straight. Well, these types of origami um, folds, it's not gonna be that way. Cause you see right here, it's not a perfect tip. It's not a perfect point. And so some of it's hanging out, but that's okay. Because you're not gonna see that part. You're more focused on this area. So once you get to this stage, okay, now you're working with the open part. The open part, this air, this edge, and make sure, like I said, make sure you're on this side and not on this side. If you start this side, it's not gonna work. It's gonna be messed up and you're gonna go, why can't I unfold this? This is not working. Make sure you're on this side. Okay, so this edge is gonna to go to the center. Flaps. So, like I said, once you got the two at the outer outer sides done, open it up, exposing that flat edge. Push these down right here, so you can go ahead and grab this with your other fingers and close it down. Squish it, squish it, squish it, squish it. Because what you want to do is make sure that every fold that you did is going to be you're going to be able to see it when you do when you pretty much flip it outside, flip it upside down or flip it inside out and then refold it. So you want those, those, um, um, edges to be, um, I don't know the word. <laughs> I don't want to say um again. Sorry about saying all the ums. I, I I'm just, I don't know. But you can't talk sometimes. So anyways, so again, outer edge to the middle, flip it down. Same thing on this side, outer edge to the middle, flip it down. Okay. All right, so now you're ready to invert your flower. So again, make sure everything is is as folded tightly as possible. If it, if anything, use your little tool, but just be careful. Okay, so now that is nice and tight and ready to unfold so we can invert it. Okay, this is the tricky part. And so the reason why I want you to make sure the folds are as creased as possible is so you can see them when you invert this. So these parts, you're gonna, these, I'm, I don't know how to, how to call it, how to say it, but these are gonna be what you push behind this piece. These pieces right here is what you're gonna push inwards and this top piece at the end is the last thing you do. Okay, so again, so just hold it. Grab this piece right here and squish it. So kind of do like, make it look like that. Okay, push that in, push that in, 
push that down. Now you're ready to move on to the next side. Okay, so again, push that in, push that in, push that, push that, push that down. Okay, so you can always go ahead and squeeze these down just to kind of make sure that they're they're there and they're not going to move on you because again you drop this or you um, put it down for any reason you, it might unravel itself so okay so again push that back push that in the back push that in push that in push that down okay this is one's the hardest one because it's your last one and you're gonna again push those in while holding your piece take your finger your thumbs and just push down on those pieces right there and then push that in stick your finger in there and then voila you're done and to make these edges sharp again just use your thumbs and your fingers to just go around it and squeeze and there you go. So I hope that was um, pretty easy for you to understand. It is very hard without me actually sitting there being there with you and showing you exactly what to, how to move it in, or how to, excuse me, how to fold your pieces and invert them and stuff like that. I may do a little section in slow-mo so you can really see how I do it. Um, so just um, stay tuned and I'm going to go ahead and finish this box of 64 sheets of paper <laughs> and at the end we'll put it together. So stay tuned. Thanks. All right, we're back with a pro tip, another one, and this one's more about uh, keeping organized. So. I'm sitting here folding all 64 sheets of paper and I guess I, again I am doing them in stages so this is in stage one which is the box uh, the box base and instead of having them all slewn around I took a little clothespin oops and just clip it put aside Every time I'm ready to fold it into the next stage, I will just pop one out and fold it up. And same thing with this. This paper clip is not gonna, you know, work with the remaining sheets that I have to fold, but I mean, it works for right now. So that's, that's one pro tip that you can do. Pro tip number three is with folding of the paper. So, get into a couple a comfortable space something where you can lean back and and just sit there and relax when you do your folding because if you're hunched over and standing up or however um it will it will put um, a burden on your shoulders and stuff like that so that's pro tip number three pro tip number four is doing fold in bulks now that is actually you only could do it with one fold but um it does help out and it will reduce the size the number of pieces of paper that you have to fold so i'll show you how to do that so i'm going to take about two sheets of paper and just when i do my my base just do it but do it as if like you're doing with one sheet of paper but you're doing it with two so make sure you make your your folds crisp. Okay, now you can just pop that out and do your squash fold right there. Squash fold right there. And then squash fold there. Squash fold there. 
So I don't know how much time that saved, but I mean, that's two bases that I just did in, in kind of in one step. So that's something that you can try to do. Um, with this, the paper being this thin, it's definitely doable. Anything thicker than this, like, this is like tissue paper. This is kind of how thin it is. So um, anything thicker than that, it would be kind of hard. Like if you were gonna try to do it with pages out of these books, it would be a little bit more difficult to get um, everything as even and straight as possible. So those are a few pro tips for you. And again, definitely have a box that you can throw all of the stuff that you're doing into. So it's everything is in one spot and then you can close it up and put it away and bring it back out whenever you're done. All right, now let's make some more. Okay, slowed the video down so I can show you how to insert um, your pink flower into your blue flower. So you want all of these little grooves right here to go in between all of this area, all of the um, areas right here. So some you can also just kind of pull this out a little bit if you wanted to, and then just go ahead and insert your flower and just work your way around until you're able to put, insert the edge into um, each petal, kind of like that. So, um, kind of hard to see. I don't know if you can see it. So each, Each ends is each is in it's I don't know how to explain it, uh, but you see kind of see what I'm saying is just that's what it needs to do all the way around, and then just pop your flower in and go ahead and pinch the petals to make sure that they are nice and square. Okay, so I'm gonna do it again. The bottom part where it, it's hard to keep straight or at a really nice ang a point, so you're gonna to have to maneuver it in here. But again, just kinda of open up your flower a little bit and each petal is gonna go into the other color. So again, hmm, trying to get this focused. So this crease, sorry, this crease is gonna be going into it, this crease, all the way around. So each crease is gonna have its own little pocket. There you go, each crease has its own little pocket. And then once you have it straight, pop it down and 
make sure your flower is straight. All right, I got 60 more of these to do, so um, I'm gonna stop the video right here, and when I come back, we're gonna go ahead and put together our Kasutama ball. Stay tuned. All right, everyone, we are ready to assemble. It doesn't look like much, but this is 64 pieces of paper all folded up together. So that is 25 folds for each sheet of paper. So 25 times 64 is 1600 folds. I folded paper 1600 times. All for you guys, just to show you how to make this beautiful Kasutama 3D origami ball. Now we get to put it all together. So this is pretty simple. Um, once you have all your colors pushed into each other, um, it's very easy to assemble. I'll go ahead and do that now. Move some of this over. And you pretty much just interlock them. So just put them down. Okay, it doesn't really matter if it's straight because you're going to straighten up once everything is, once you have your, your circle. Which there's your circle. And It'd be easier if you had three hands to do this, but uh, we're going to go ahead and try to do it with two. I'm going to use my tiny hands and hold all this together. Now, if you had a rubber band, this would actually help too, but we don't. So, without burning myself, I'm going to take my glue gun and, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to do something different. Okay. I am going to take... Uh, this sheet of paper right here and kind of make a little bit of a base. Now I gotta find some scissors. I had some in my desk and now I don't know where I put them. So hold on one second. And we're back. Got my pair of scissors and I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut this open. This way, when I put the glue down in the center, this will protect my mat. And so, and it'll kind of be like a little bit of a, um, a base. So let's go ahead and just put the glue right there. Okay, so I kind of have a little bit of a base. I got that started. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest around in a circle. And that way I can only, I only have to hold half of the circle instead of the full thing. All right. So that kind of helped out. So that's my my third hand, I guess. And I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and throw some glue down in here. And then go ahead and start layering the top layer. This all fits in just kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Oops. Ah, my glue is falling off. Okay. All right. So those are my two layers. I'm going to hold this for a few minutes and to let the glue um, harden up. 
because this is a pretty old glue stick, so I don't know how effective it would be. Okay, so far so good. And there's pretty much no, really, no rhyme or reason to how to put this together because your, it kind of interlocks with each other with all the angles. Okay, so once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a lot of glue. This works. This is a really old glue gun, people. My mom gave this to me and she used this thing in the 80s. That tells you how old it is. So um, sometimes you have to give it a little extra loving to get it to work. So I'm gonna put glue all around base of that and go ahead and pop it down right in the middle. I'm going to hold it, let the glue set. So I'm going to reiterate the fact that if you are going to make this, do definitely take your time because it is time consuming. I literally spent five hours folding all this paper and that's with actually doing some of it uh, a day before. And so if you have five hours to kill and you don't mind just sitting there and folding some origami paper, you know, sit on the couch, put your feet up with a little lap desk, put on some Netflix show or whatever, and just binge watch while you fold your origami. And in about five hours, and that's with, five hours is with someone who actually knows what they're doing. So if you're new at this, it's gonna probably take you a little bit longer. But once you fold your first few, it, you kind of get a rhythm, which is really nice. So this is actually going to be a fun project for anybody who is actually in quarantine and not able to go anywhere. And you don't have anything to do. You don't want to sit there and be on your phone all day long, even though I am encouraging you to watch the YouTube page so you learn how to do this. But, I mean, this is a fun little project. You can get your kids to do it. Um, kids are very smart, and I know that they can pick if they could pick up video games and know how to figure out you know technology they can definitely know how to make some origami okay so there you go this is um, your first half of your ball we are now going to do the second half okay so this seems this little method seems to work so but I'm with this time I'm gonna glue a little bit more down so I don't have to really hold it too much. I'll put a little bit of glue here. Ooh, yep. I got glue on the mat, which is what I didn't want to do, but oh well, I could pick it off. Okay, just go ahead and do that and start make my circle I think I'm missing another one so let's go ahead and throw this one in there okay all right got the bottom circle going let me go ahead and hold this let it dry a little bit. Take this piece of glue off while I'm doing that. All right, layer one done. Now let's go ahead and get the second layer going. All right. glue. Go ahead and start putting down my layers. And then go ahead and hold this down so it can harden. Oh, 
pull some of the string off. Okay. One thing I do not like about hot glue is all the strings that you have to pull off. All right, final one, final piece. And we are ready to go. Okay, and go ahead and pop that down in the middle. Hold that down. Okay, if you wanted to, you can always put extra glue um, down through the center, through the sides, right here to kind of have it like a little bit of a tighter ball. Um, I think I did that, yeah, I did do that with this one. So this one's a little bit tighter than this one right here. But, you know, to each is their own, whatever you want to do. If you want to take the time to actually glue down every individual piece, you are able to do that. Or you can do my method of just all over and be done with it. All right, so here we go. Now we can actually put together. This one I'm actually going to make sure that I actually glue down the pieces individually on this one because I want it to be, I want it to look, um, I want it to be a tight ball, which this is gonna be kind of difficult, I think, because I haven't done this before. Or I've done it, but it, it's been a while. But you know what, I may not, oh, here's another thing. Make sure you're holding your pieces long enough because if you don't, your ball, your halves are gonna be, um, one's gonna be bigger than the other. But that's okay. So I'm not gonna worry about um, gluing down every individual. I'll go back and do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it together so you can see what it kind of looks like or what it looks like when it's completely done. And I got glue dripping out. I put too much glue. Ooh, hot. That's hot. Don't burn yourself. So go ahead and tell you that not to burn yourself like I just did, but it's okay. I'm a big girl, I'll survive. Okay. There's a big old glob of glue right there, but let's see. Okay, and there it is. There is your Kasutama 3D origami ball, 64 sheets of paper, a total of 1600 folds to get this modular origami piece. Now this is not for the faint of heart. This is time consuming and it is hard, it's not the easiest thing to do, but once you know how to make the piece, you, I mean, it, it, it goes by pretty fast if you know what you're doing. You just have to have time and patience. So if you'd like to do this, here's the instructions. If you need any more information, please let me know. And tell me what you think about this origami piece that I just did for you in the comments and what else you'd like to see. I may do the lotus, the lotus flower next. Um, you can do this in multiple sizes. This is one of my tinier versions that I've done before, but you can make them a little bit bigger and then put a little tea light in them if you wanted to. So that's a little cute idea. So I might do that on the next origami video, but here is the 3D ball Kasutama origami. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Like and subscribe, share the video if you know someone who would like it, and we'll see you in the next. Have a great day. 
Hey everyone, I'm back and I decided at the last minute to show you what you could do with these Kasutama modular flower origami balls. So, you know, once you make them, you're like, well, what do I do with them? Do I just like sit them down and just, you know, do nothing with them, give them to my cat, let them play with it, or how do I display these? And one thing I've I've thought about doing was either find like some sort of skewer or stick and then just kind of, I don't have a stick with me, but so we're going to go ahead and just use this um, glue stick. So you can squish it between a stick and put it in a pot, which I don't have a pot with me, but you know, and just kind of do something like that. And maybe you can add some things with it, like a little bit of like baby's breath. You can kind of stick in the middle of all these um, little nooks and crannies and have it as like a origami flower pot kind of situation. Or you can also, I've seen, I've seen this before where you could take ribbon and kind of put it between the ball like so, well, you know, kind of like so, and then you can hang it up somewhere. You can make these in Christmas colors and make ornaments for your Christmas tree and do it this way. Um, you can get paper that is a lot smaller than this and I'm telling you, even though this is hard and this was an, a three by three sheet of paper, three by three sheet of paper, um, you can do it even smaller because I have and it is a little bit more time consuming but you can do that and make little Kasutama 3D uh, origami balls and put them in your tree and it would actually be really really pretty um, or you can just make them big you can make them even bigger and put a, like a little loop at the top and then just hang it somewhere especially if you have children or little girls who enjoy doing this and you can just hang it all over, over their rooms or hang it from a string and do different sizes and just have art in the corner of your room which I actually might do that um, now that I'm thinking about it because I think that would be actually really really pretty do different size balls um, another option you can do is get something like um, this ribbon right here and you can curl it with scissors and just kind of curl it out, make it little curly cues, and then just get a color that actually accents your Kasutama really nicely, and then just have it where it kind of just hangs down like this. So that's another option you can do. So there's many things you can do with with these um, these pieces and stuff like that. So you know, the world is your oyster, and just let your imagination run wild and you can come up with a bunch of pretty things on how to display your Kasutama since you spent so much time building this or folding this um, you might want to display your artwork and you know that's a couple of ideas you can have um, again I think I'm going to actually do multiple size balls and then hang them from my ceiling or something like that in my art room I think that would be really pretty so there you go I'm going to call this pro tip number five, and I hope you enjoy it. And thank you again for being here. Thank you for liking the video, subscribing, sharing the video, and please definitely leave comments down below. I really would like to get some feedback. Thank you very much, and guys, have a great day.